What's up, Hoopers? Uh, by now, you've heard the Kawhi Leonard, loop. Kawhi Leonard news. And by extension, you've heard the Paul George news. And by extension, you've heard the Oklahoma City Thunder news. I don't know about y'all, but I am a diehard Oklahoma fan ever since they moved from Seattle. This is the closest thing you get to a basketball team in Kansas City, Missouri. So, as an OKC fan, all I have to say is what the entire fuck. I've never had a trade hurt me this much or had me in. I don't have words for this. I don't know why I'm talking because I don't have words for this. This is one of the craziest trades I've ever heard of happening. And it's, it's not even like there was an inkling. It just happened. <laughs> and the fact that all it took was a phone call from Paul George, I mean from Kawhi Leonard to Paul George, is the craziest thing ever. Because one, who knew Kawhi Leonard had a phone? I get it, 2019, everybody has technology, but who knew that he, of all people, had a phone? Better yet, who knew that he had numbers of people who were not in his family in that phone? That's surprising, confusing, uh, new information and the fact that it took one phone call for Paul George to be like you know what I do kind of got beef with Russell Westbrook I'm out of here like what what was the issue did he say something about Zion blowing out the shoe was was it was it something else did uh did he not like fishing as much as he thought he would like fishing um <laughs> This is heavy. This is it's it's this is incredible. This is groundbreaking. This is disturbing. I need answers. I need to not stop. I I want to stop being as confused as everybody else because um, I didn't see this coming. I didn't want to see this coming. Um, you telling me that Kawhi Leonard coming on the phone. Hitting him with it. Yo, baby. Like, <laughs> what did he say? What was the sales pitch? Did, what, yeah, I know it was a long way. It, it had to just be like, you like California? It, it's nice, ain't it? You want to win a championship at home? Yeah, that sounds nice. Then do it. Just tell them, bye. I can do that. You can do whatever you want. Paul George and the phone is, I know I know he hung up afterwards I know he ain't said no goodbyes none of that it was just over and it happened and we have to talk about the sorcery that you have to do as Jerry West for this to happen so I don't know about y'all uh, our GM is pretty darn good uh, OKC's GM Sam Presti has been amazing with the draft picks he might not made the best decisions on who to keep or how to keep them but um, we have three MVPs one dude that was considered a defensive player of the year back when he was like in his prom and an NBA championship so um, I I did not plan on seeing a OKC rebuild until the end of Paul George's and Russell Westbrook's contracts, and that's supposed to that's going to be like I, I guess four years for us, in well four years for both of them, which I didn't sign up to have my heart broken. As an OKC fan, I was only like I think it was like nineteen when. Uh, Kevin Durant lost, left, cried. One single tear. G, this is a G tier. I tried to hold it back, but it was like, nah, you gotta let me go with all your repressed anger, bro. And I went to sleep. I went to sleep for hours. I'm... This is more disturbing than that. Because not only do I write on stuff, I had been working on like a 2,000 word piece that is now going to be incinerated. Well, actually, no, I just got to scrub the Paul George part and add, like, two other pieces in the rest of their future because I don't think there could have been a better haul 
realistically for Paul George at this point without it requiring another superstar and if not a superstar then like a plethora of stars like you gotta give me like Bradley Bill Rui Hachimura your next round draft pick and someone else um, that's the only way that that sounds logical maybe you give me um, Drogic and um, Jimmy Butler if you're the Heat I don't know a possible trade package and then this just popped up and I like Danilo Gallinari I really do I wanted them to get Danilo Gallinari a thousand years ago I'm not too you know, Gallinari now with all the injuries and the him not being the Gallinari that was able to drop like thirty every once in a while and really shake it. He, he was he was an all star, near all star at one point. That's not the Gallinari we see anymore. So it's cool. Do like the pick up of Shea Gilders Alexander. I have to watch more tape on him to have a better opinion because. Um, from what I saw, he's going to be nice on the defensive end, which we need. Uh, he's a solid ball handler, which OKC desperately needs a, another one of those guys. We don't have a lot of playmakers at 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he can kind of get the job done, and hopefully he is a good enough shooter where we can bring him off the bench and kind of have him as a secondary ball handler and playmaker. Cause OKC desperately needs that, and I don't know why they continue to draft long athletic dudes. I get it. There's something you clearly want to continue to do here, but we all see an issue. Their shooters are playmakers, and you said athletes. We don't need more Jeremy Grant. We need more. We don't have a player to fit this category on the team outside of somebody like, I don't know, uh, Dennis Schroeder, and... Efficiency issues is the reason why I'm not putting Den Schroeder on this list because I like him, but not the most reliable shooter. He's a little bit uh, turnover prone, but not as much as the backup point guards we've had in the past. Um, my opinion on this trade is um, have you ever seen like the waves of like a beat? And they're, they're constantly doing it. That's how I feel. Uh, my heart was invested in a healthy Paul George and Russell Westbrook combination. There were times when we had MVP Paul George and Russell Westbrook. Even if he wasn't doing a great job, like offensively, he was still doing other things that made this team a winning, not championship, but at least a contender. This... This is uh this is not what I wanted for OKC, but this is what we got. Cause we we gonna ha we gonna have to do something. The Clippers. If you thought that you could go to LA and play like both teams and think you could do a solid job offensively, they ruined that for you. Cause um, Patrick Beverly. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Montrez Harrell, whoever they put at the five, doesn't. They could put anybody. They could put one of those first round draft picks that they don't have at the five, and it's still going to be so hard for any team to score on them. Like, I haven't come to grips with this because they got it all. Um, they got the offense they got the tenacity they got the meanness they got the defenders they got the shooters Landry Shaman is the dude from the corner um, it's, they still we didn't even try to get Lou please I hope we tried to get Lou Will but Lou Will still coming off the bench like we we don't have to do next season we could just say they won and we could just go we can just do free agency again, and we can go to 2020, 21, and see um, see what we can get with one of those 
basically seven first round picks because I think it's five first round picks. Uh, four of them unprotected, one is protected, and two trade exceptions. Um, trade exceptions can get you like free players. <sighs> this is a lot. This could be fun. This could be OKC's rebuild. And um, I don't like their foundation so far. Five, round, five first round draft picks. We don't exactly know the years. Um, so this could be extremely crazy for, say, let's the 2022 or 2023 um, season when there's a chance that the um, chance that the one and done rule could end and that also means we get the seniors and um, also do some high school reporting what I'm seeing from this 2023 class if they continue to uh, get better along the line there's going to be some monsters there. This 2022, it's it's crazy. It's super top heavy. The crown jewel is Imani Bates. Um, Imani Bates has the ability to do whatever he wants as long as he continues to stay on the, stay on the straight path he is going to and stay healthy. If that happens, Imani Bates is going to be the scariest prospect we have seen in years and probably won't get the same amount of hype as, as Zion is because he's not super flashy but we could see inklings of the perfect amalgamation of Kevin Durant and Michael Beasley like all the natural talent of Michael Beasley and all of the, I've clearly worked my ass off for this of Kevin Durant and the same player with an attitude who's going to be a scary, scary dude. And um, this has been a lot. I'm going to sleep because it's like two o'clock in the morning. Um, but life is going to be so different in the NBA. And I was actually going to make a video about uh, the East might be better than the West for the first time ever. And then this trade came through, slapped me in my mouth and said, you watch how you talk about my NBA boy. And I was like, you got it. You got it, dude. I'm so sorry. I will never speak on any of your doings again. This, this has been a tough one. Thank you, NBA for uh, messing up my sleep schedule. I appreciate it. Whoa, thanks for the bombs. Um, and all the people that were affected by the earthquakes over the last two days, the ones in California and the ones in Vegas, I hope everybody's okay and that works out. Um, if you like what you heard today, please like, subscribe, comment, Tell us other ideas you want for stories. Uh, there's going to be a lot of summer league stuff coming from us. We're probably going to have an emergency podcast tomorrow. We did not plan on having one for a little minute. Um, high school basketball season is going to be coming up. We got a lot of videos to be coming out later this uh, later this month, really. We're going to be having stuff. Uh, but yeah, like, subscribe, comment. And tell me what you are most surprised about from this trade and how it changes the NBA season in the comment section below. <laughs>